So, so actually, we so the Monday class. Uh, actually, the Monday was the substitute holiday. <laughs> it's, it's a new kind of uh, holiday, actually. <laughs> so, it's not. It's a, actually, the October third is the. It's called the uh, some uh, new foundation. Maybe. How can I say it's a new foundation day in Korean? But the, the Monday was the uh, substitute holiday. Uh, it's Teche uh, So <laughs> just, the name is so weird, but so actually, so I mm, recorded the uh, previous class and then I posted the recorded video on YouTube. So I Hope every student already watched the, the previous uh, so video posted on the YouTube. Okay, uh, so I, <clears throat> so uh, sorry, so I briefly review what we learned in the previous class. That means the the, the last class that is a recorded video. So in the previous class, we learned about the logical operation. So logical operation means that. So I explained that computers can only understand binary data. So binary data is composed of multiple bits. And then a single bit represents zero or one. So single bit has only two values. So actually the, this, uh, because, because a single bit can represent only two different values, the binary, Actually, the width of the binary data is very long. So this logical operation is used for uh, so the it's a logical operator such as and or exclusive or or not. Also, we can uh, use the shift bit shift operators. So as you can see in this slide, that you can find several. Uh, logical operators of uh, high-level languages such as C and Java here. And then these operators are directly supported by computer ISA instruction set architecture. Also RISC-V supports the, these operators like a shift to left, shift to right, and bitwise and or exclusive or. We can find the several instructions here. Uh, so I explained that the structure of ship to of instruction is a little bit different because we are handling the 64 bit risk five integer ISA instruction set architecture. So because uh, these instructions of risk 5 64i handles the 64 bit data. That means the 64 bit operands. So, in order to support the shift operations, the immediate field of the, this shift instruction need to have six bits. Okay, because why the immediate field is six bit for the 64 bit risk 5 instruction. So like SLL and then SRL. And then if you are interested, then you can read the risk five instructions and architecture menu. And, and then if, so I already explained in the previous uh, class. And then in order to support the sorry to be shipped operator, shipped operations, uh, risk five sixty four i supports the SLLW and SRLW instruction. But for the 64 bit operands, risk five just use the SLL and then SLL or SLL. And then the size of immediate field is six bit. Okay. And, uh, and the bit wise and or exclusive wise is very simple. So bit by bit logical operation. Okay. And then it's a very, important, so actually. So instructions for making decisions and 
we frequently use these uh, conditional branch or branch instructions in our high level languages. Okay. So we frequently use the if some conditions and then do something like this. So this is, oh, where is what happened? Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, oh, this is condition. And then if the condition is true, we do something. And if the condition isn't false, then do another thing. So this is the some kind of uh, condition statement in a high level language. So based on the result of a condition, and then a program can execute two different operations. So like this, so if it's true, do something, then if the condition is false, do another thing, because if they're different things. And then in order to support the, this operation, risk five also supports the conditional branch instructions. And then actually all kinds of computer eyes are supposed to conditional branch or branch instructions. And then I first explain, explain about the conditional branch instructions. So this conditional operations means that, so the condition of the instruction is determined by the instruction itself. So that means we can use the BQ to compare two values. And then, so this is the condition. So BQ means that, that means branch if equal. So this is B. So you need to remember B EQ. So this conditional branch instruction leads to data, to occurrence from register file. So every instruction except load and store uh, accesses register file. Okay, you need to remember. So this B, BQ leads the data from RS1 and RS2 and, <clears throat> and then check the equality. Okay, so if the condition is true, that means that uh, two the value of two data, the values of two data are equal to each other, then the program jump to label L1. So I also explained about the program counter. So actually in the previous class, I mentioned that the program counter is an address for instruction, okay? So we learned that the instruction can be represented as the binary data, like other normal data. So that means instructions are also stored in the main memory. And then if the data is stored in the memory, then not to access the data, then we need address. So this address is, is similar to the home house number of the apartment. So, so actually this PC, so it's called the program counter. Program counter <clears throat> is an address for instructions, okay? So when you point uh, data, then we need to you know the location of the data. That is the address actually. So data is, uh, the data space is assigned in the main memory, and then we access that data with the address because we, in order to access the data, we need to know the location of the data. That is the address. And then instructions are the same. In order to access instructions in the main memory, we need to know the location of the instruction. So for example, when we write the high level language code, like, a equal B, C equal one, D equal zero. Then we pre we can use the line number like one, two, three. And then in order to point the A equal B, then we can use the line number one. So PC 
the program count is very similar to the line number of instruction in the high level language. Okay. So the label L1 means that L1 means the program counter. That means the location of target instruction. So for this branch instruction, the conditional branch, if the condition is true, then we jump to the target point and then the, the processor will execute the instructions labeled by, so pointed by this L1. So L1 actually means the program counter of target instruction, not actually the program counter. We will learn how to calculate the program counter later based on the this label because the also the structure of the this instruction is a little bit different. Okay. So we can uh, use an uh, other condition instructions such as BME uh, and then uh, PLT BG and then so and then for this PLT and BG we need to compare the the what's the so magnitude of data. So, so a little bit uh, that means the some. So LT means that the less than, and then GE means greater, greater or equal. So we can use the we can use the this comparator operator. So we can also use the unsigned comparison like PLTU and PGU like this. Also in the previous class, we learned about the basic blocks. So this is also important to concept uh, in computer architecture because, uh, so you need to remember the definition of the basic block, okay? And why is it important? The compiler optimi optimization techniques can be applied based on the basic blocks. Because if the, the very first instruction of the base, base basic block is executed, then the, the following instructions can be executed sequentially until the end of basic block. So why is it important? So, so we learn about the architecture of the real hardware processor. And then if you learn the architecture of a hardware processor, then you will know that, oh, if the branch is executed, then performance can be degraded. It is because the clock counts are wasted when the branch is executed, okay? So that means if the branch is not executed, then performance will be very high. So if basic block, get, you know, in a basic block instructions can be executed sequentially from top to bottom, then performance is nearly same to the, the CPI. That means the CPI is nearly one. Okay. Uh, so now uh, in, the, in this class, in the, in the today's class, uh, we will learn about how function calls or procedure, procedure call is supported by risk five instructions. So the first supporting, so the title of the, this topic is supporting procedures. So what is a procedure actually? So when I uh, mentioned the today's topic, I use a terminology function. So what is a function? What is your function? So like this, so what's this? So this is the main function of C program, okay, C. So when the C is executed, then the firstly, 
the processor execute main function. So it calls the our processor calls main function, and then the statement inside of a main function is executed. So you can use the another function like uh, int c as c equal function name foo, like uh, argument here, like int a, b, c here. So this how function is used. So if the function is used, then we can define the content of a function later, like here. Like C equal A plus B and return C. So this is the, <laughs> the typ a typical structure of a function. So what does that mean? The, so in the main function, in the main function that is C program, another function foo is called. So I use the name called. So, so that's why we put continue use the terminology function call. Okay. So foo function is called. And then if the foo function is called, statement inside of this function is executed. Okay. So, so until now we learned that high level language is translated into in assembly instructions of a, a certain processor like RISC five, and then these assembly instructions are also translated into machine instructions. So, this main function, the statement inside of the main, fun main function, also will be translated into some assembly instructions. Add, add, and then function is called. Function has also its own instructions. Okay, because states, states, statements are also uh, written inside of a function. And function is called, then function has also its own instruction. So if the, this function is compiled, some instructions will be generated. Inst zero, inst one, inst two, blah, blah, blah. So this is the instruction of the main function. So one. And then, function is called. If a function is called, then instructions inside of this function should be executed. So what does that mean? So this is the, these are the instruction of a function. So I already mentioned that instructions are data. And then that means the instructions have addresses and then this address of, a, of an instruction is program counter. So if the function is called, this is this, these instructions of a function will have addresses. That means the program counters like program counter zero, program counter one, program counter two. Actually, program counter one is the program counter zero plus four in the risk of five because the size of instruction of risk five is a four byte. Okay. It's the PC zero plus eight, blah, blah, blah. So what does that mean? If the function is here, like a foo here, then these instructions, instructions of a main function is executed and then, oh, function is here. That means program jumps to program counter of function, right? And then instructions of this function is executed and then instructions inside of a function 
complete, what should we do? So in this C program, here is a function and the function is called and the function is instructions inside of this function is executed and complete. What should we do? Instructions very next to all this function code will be executed. Right. So if there is the, some like D equal one and C and E equal two, then after this function code, these instruction will be executed. That means our program returned from function and then continues execution of each own instructions, right? That's why in a shift program, we use return statement. So but at the end of the, you can find that if you are familiar with the C program, you can find that at the end of the function, we can find return. That means this is the end of the function. Then we return to the some, uh, non, it's called the non if function, okay? So it's a parent, some parent of the function that is the caller, okay? And if the function call, the other, these instructions are, will be executed, uh, not the, the very next instructions. So, so here, in order to support a function call, that means it's also called procedure call. So which instruction is executed? The first jump. So in the previous class, we learned the conditional branch. So in this, uh, this these instruction, these instructions support if statement like if blah, 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 else, blah, blah, blah. So this is the conditional statement, but the function is called, there is no condition. Okay, right. If a function is called, we need to jump to the, a certain location of this function instructions. So we need the jump instruction. So this is the unconditional jump because we don't need to consider any result of the conditions. We just jump to the, a certain location of the program. That's it. And we need to return from a jump, return from a function. In order to return from a certain location, we need to know, a program needs to know return position. So the so instructions are executed and then at this point, the, we jump to the another point and then it's done. We need to return to the very next instructions here. So in order to return from a certain location, we need to know the address of return point. Okay, so, and then this operation is called link. That means just store return point. Okay, so not to support function calls, the processor need to support jump operation and link operation. So in this time, we will learn about instructions that support jump and link, okay? Okay, uh, so this is the steps required for procedure calling. And then I already explained in the, in the previous slide, so, I will skip to this slide. 
And then in order to support the function call, then risk five provides the jump and link instruction called J A L is the jump and link. So if you see the structure of, the, of this instruction, they can find all this, this is the instruction name, and this is the RD, so destination, register, and then procedure label means the, it's a similar to the L1 of the conditional branch. That is the label of the target instruction. So that is actually PC of target instruction. So that is the structure of JAL, jump and link instruction of risk five. So what is the definition of this instruction? That means the behavior of this instruction. First, J, if JAL is executed in the processor, then the program jumps to the, this target, target label. That means that PC of current processor is changed to the PC of target instruction. Okay, so that jump means that actually a processor records the current program counter. That means the location of currently executed instruction okay so processor records this pc when the when an uh, instruction is executed so the pc is changed then that means that the currently executed instruction is changed okay because the location the location of executed instruction is changed okay so pc is updated by this procedure label and the next PC, like if the JAL is here, and then there will be another instruction here, very, very next to the JAL, and then at some point, the L1, the target of the, this JAL will be here. So it's error is here. And then the next, the, this, this is also instruction. So that means that the JAL has also pointed by this PC, current PC, program counter. Then what is the program counter of the very next instruction? It's PC plus four. Right. Mm -hmm. So this value is stored in X1 destination register. That is the operation of J, A, L, jump and link. So when the JAL is executed, then the program jumps to the target and then the return point is stored in the register file, okay? So as I explained here, jumping operation and link operation is supported. Then uh, when the JAL is executed, then, then a program jumps to the target function like here, L1, and then instructions inside of this function is executed. And then we need to return to the uh, return point. And this return point is stored in the, this X1, okay? So, and the, 
in a C program, when a return is executed, then the function execution is completed and then returned to the non-if function. Okay, it's a parent function. Now how can we support this operation? Actually, the return point is stored in the one of the register file. Then jump means that, ah, uh, return means that. Just restore stored return point and then update the PC with the, this program counter stored in the this X1. Okay, so that means the return point, the program counter of the return point is stored in the X1, the one of the register file. Okay, and then when the return is executed in the program, then the reverse operation. We need to read the, this stored return point from the register file and update the PC, current PC with the, this red value. Understand? So it's a, a, it can be a little bit uh, tricky, <laughs> a little bit confused or tricky because the PC is uh, changed uh, like this, but try to understand, okay? Okay, so in order to support the, this operation, RISC V provides the, another instruction called the JALR. That means the jump and link register. Okay, it's called the JALR. So operation of the JALR means that. So read the uh, PC. So store the PC value from uh, this source register and then plus uh, calculate the offset with uh, this value like the uh, data transfer instructions. And then the PC is updated by X1 plus offset. But in this case, we use the zero. So that means offset is zero. So that means that it's the PC becomes the, the PC of the very next instruction of JAL. And then JALR can use the destination register, but in this example, we just use the destination register as X0. So that means the data is not stored in the register file, okay? Uh, okay, so some some one of some student asked about the nested procedure code. So this uh, this will be also explained today. So so actually nested uh, procedure code. Then the Exxon, as he uh, I think he he or she, so as this student expected, the Exxon can be overwritten by many jump and link instruction. So actually we need, we need to uh, avoid this situation. So if the, a certain data is overwritten by another data, then this data, the previous data will be lost. So we need to avoid this situation. So in order to, for, in order to avoid this situation, the data in this uh, old data should be stored in the temporary storage storage space, temporary storage space. And then this space is called stack, okay? We will also, we will learn about the stack uh, today. Okay, oh, it's, it's very good question. <laughs> okay, this is the example from the uh, procedure code. So as you can see, this is the leap procedure example. So leap, so, in the previous class, I mentioned the branch. So it's a branch here. And then after this branch, there can be leaf. 
So lip is the, the last part of the branch actually. So, so that means the lip procedure means that after this function, then this, this function will, will not call another function. So this, because this is the, the end point of the tree. So this lip procedure means that this, is, this function will not call another function. So it will return to parent function only. Okay, that is the definition of lip procedure. Okay. So as you can see, this is the procedure name, the lip example, and then the this, this lip uh, lip example function receives four arguments like G H. I, J, and then calculate the this, and then returns F, this is the final result. So how can we translate this function? So we assume that the arguments are stored in register file from X10 to X13, so like G, H, I, J, and then F is in X20. And then we can use the X5 and X6 as temporary registers. And then temporary registers here. And then this function will use the X5, X6, X20. So that means the register file, the registers X5, X6, X20 will be written by this function, lip example, right? And as I explained, if the X5, X6, X20 is written by this function, then original data inside of these registers will be lost. Now, in order to avoid this situation, we need to save X5, X20, where stack. So as this, uh, I believe every, everyone can see the questions raised by uh, one, one student. So as this student mentioned, we can lost the overwritten data inside of some registers. Then in order to avoid the situation, that means that we need to store original data in temporary storage. So this temporary storage is called the stack storage. It's called stack. Where is where is this temporary storage? So until now, we learned of the processor. We don't know about the inside of the processor, but we learned that oh, this is the register file, and this is the main memory. And then we need to temporarily store the data inside of this register file but we cannot use this register file because this register file will be used by the currently running program. The where is the temporary storage? <laughs> Stack memory is in main memory, okay? So let's see the example code. So this is the RISC-V assembly code for this function. So as you can see, oh, you can find the new SP here. So, as, so actually, if you remember the, oh, it's very old. Where is the register? Okay. So <laughs> you 
do you remember this risk five register slide that you can find? Oh, X2 is stack point X, X2 register will be used as stack pointer. So actually this is SP. So uh, it's a very long journey. So actually this SP means the X2. So we can use any, any main convention. So we can use X2 as SP, so we can use X2 directly, okay? So in this example, we just, oh, oops. In this example, this leap example will be a uh, leap example function may be called. So this is the label of the, it's the label. So this is the label of the, this uh, function is a leap example. Then the first instruction is add I S P S P minus 24. So that means we just adjust the stack pointer as SP is SP minus 24. So that means this is the stack pointer here. This is the memory. And then we adjust the stack pointer as the SP minus 24. That's the lower part of the memory. And then based on the, this stack pointer, we just store the original data of X5, X6, X20 inside of the stack. So it looks like, so this is the current, so it's the original stack pointer here. And then this is the current stack pointer, which is SP minus 24, because we already calculate the new stack pointer like this. And then, that means the zero, points, point, uh, zero plus 24, so X20. X20 is stored in this space and X6, X5 are stored in this space and this space, that's it. Because X5, why do we need to store? You know, to keep original data of the parent function. And then this function used the X5 stored the temporary data in X5 here, as you can see, hmm, works, X6 here, okay? And then calculate the fun final result here, okay? And then we need to if you see the, this function, this function returns the final result to the parent. So the, this function moves the data to the X10. So that is used for return value. Okay. And then it's done. You will need the function need to return to the parent function, the parent. How? Oh, it's deleted. So actually we store the X20, X6, X5 in the stack memory. Then we need to restore the, this original data. Like, like, so we need to read data from the stack and then restore the original data in the register file and then also adjust the stack pointer to the original location, original point, and then return to the caller. That means the parent function, where caller, understand? So, so this is the content of the stack memory. So I already explained about the, this stack memory here. So it's a stack point and the, it's the adjusted stack point and then stack point is restored. And then based on the, this adjusted stack point, the 
data is temporarily stored in the stack. Okay. So register usage. So, so if you remember the register name of the risk five, then you can find, oh, this register is, is the registers are temporary registers. And then, oh, these registers are saved registers. So that means the compiler uses this, this information to manage registers. Okay. So for example, so X5 to X7 and the X28 to X31 registers are temporary, temporary registers. Does that mean? It will not be preserved by curly. So what, what is curly? So color and curly. So curly means the, it's a someone that is cold. It's a color, it's the someone that cold. <laughs> it's similar to employer and then employee. So if we use the E, then that means that it's some passive uh, subject, <laughs> okay? So X, these registers are temporary registers. So these registers will not be preserved by Koli. So actually in this example, oops. Uh, so in this example, X5, X6s are stored in the state, but actually these are temporary registers. So the data inside of this X5 and X, X6, X5 to X6, so X5 to X7 will not be stored in the stack because it, those registers are temporary registers. And then if these registers should be stored, then we can use the stack memory also, but it's usually, so, Usually, compiler uses this, this convention. So it's not strict uh, law, it's not a strict law, it's a somewhat recommendation, okay? So usually these registers will not be preserved by Curly. And then these are saved registers. So that means, uh, the, if the, Data should data is stored in the, these registers by caller, and then Koli need to store data inside of these registers. Okay, it should be uh, registers. Uh, it should be stored in stack. So there is the saved registers like this. So this is naming convention. So actually, we can use the the register number like this, like X0 to, and then, so these, these are the, uh, some uh, com, ABI name, so like zero. So we can use the X0, or you can also use the ABI name, like zero, RA, SP, and like this. So as you can see, this is the SP, so that actually X2, okay? Then you can find the saber here. So if the, if the save to register registers are used, then Koli need to save, okay? But the, the temporal registers, if the temporal registers are, should be stored, then color needs to store, okay? Okay, uh, and then uh, before start, people explain about the non nip procedure. So we have keys. So this is the pop keys of the today's class. Then you can answer, submit, you can submit your answer to on Blackboard. 
So, and then I got like the first quiz, the deadline for this quiz is um, 11.59 to today, okay? Uh, I will show this uh, quiz slides on, until Uh, yeah, with <laughs> that is a with okay, yeah, right. It's type. Okay, oh, these are very simple questions. So if you understand, you learned in the this chapter two instructions, then I believe you can easily solve uh, these, you can easily answer these questions, okay? okay. So let's move on to another topic. It's a non nip procedure. So, so non nip procedure means that it's a procedure that call other procedures. So actually in a function, a function can call, can call other functions. Is that right? It's a frequently also can frequently use non nip procedures, okay? So we can also use the nested calls, like the so recursive. So we can use this nested call for recursive functions. So as one student asked about the, this nested call, the, the, a function is calls another function, then the return address will maybe uh, overwritten by another function call. Like the, so actually we use the x1 as the return point like here, uh, here, I say return address. So R A, so we use X one as R A. So in a, in a function call another function, then X one 
the original data inside of X1 can be overwritten. And then we need to avoid this situation. And then, so that means the, this value, so this data should be stored in the temporary stories. That means step. So in a nested call, so when the, when the nested call is used, then return addresses also should be stored in the stack, okay? And then the function is returned from uh, another so function. This return address is restored from stack, okay? So this is the example of non lip process actually there's a recursive function recursive function so it's a factorial this function receives one argument here and then if n is less than one just return f and then s return n multiply by fact and minus one so argument is change it but this function calls its own function here. So how can we implement? So this is the uh, assembly instruction of this lip, it's not lip procedure, it's a non-lip procedure actually. So, <clears throat> uh, in order to implement this, this, this function, it's a recursive function with uh, risk five instructions, we need to remember that the stack pointer should be stored in the temporary storage, it's a stack. So first, uh, this is the factorial function, so it's a function, it's a label of the function. Then firstly, this, when the function is called, then function adjusts the stack pointer here. So this stack pointer is adjust, adjusted based on the, uh, the, the size of stored data. So in this case, we need to store two register data. So, so the stack, we just adjust the stack pointer like minus 16, okay? And then in the fact, this factorial function is a fact function just to store the return address and argument. So in this example, we assume that argument is in N is in X10, so result will be stored in the X10. So the first, so this is the stack pointer. We just adjust the step pointer here, and then x10 is here, x1 is here. Okay. Then we perform the m minus one, so x10 is so x5 is m minus one, and then check the value of is m minus one. Let's just compare with the x0. That means the zero. And then if the this n minus one is bigger than is a is a greater, greater or equal to zero. So that means the n is is a greater or equal to one, then go to L1. L1 is here. Right? So The, so let us assume that the uh, n is uh, uh, bigger than uh, uh, bigger than one. So we just perform the n equal n minus one. So in this function, as you can see, we just compare with the n with 
one and then is n is uh, this is s <laughs> then we need to calculate the n minus one and then gives this argument to the this argument to the fact function understand so it performs the n minus one and then just call n minus one it's the same for n just call fact n minus one so this function is a fact function call fact function itself okay so does call fact but we order just the argument x10 like n minus one. So it's just <clears throat> equivalent to call fact n minus one. Understand? Okay, return to here. So, so you need to remember that when the fact function is firstly called x1 is stores the return address. So firstly, we store the return address of parent function. So make caller, right? So, so that is the actually RA of caller. Then current stack point is here. Oh, fact function is just called then we need to execute this instruction. The stack point is adjusted again for x1, x10 is stored in the stack point. So it's a new stack point, like is a minus 48, it's a minus 24. So what is the value of this x1? What is the this value? So this J A L is executed here. Then the return address is P C O B add I. Understand? So this is the PC of this instruction. This instruction. Understand? And then what is X10? So X10 is already updated by M minus one. So that is the n minus one, understand? So, and then we just to compare the x5, it is or not, it's a, it's a n minus one, actually it's a n, it's a n minus one, minus one. So we just to store, uh, compare the x5 with the zero. And then let us assume that, oh, now the, n is uh, zero, so, so, so that, that means that x5 is a zero, okay? So what, what will happen? x5 equals zero. This instruction will be executed, okay? So this, you need to return just f. f is the argument of Fact function. So we just uh, so this is just a, m equal zero. Uh, but we just update the x zero as the one, and then I'll just the stack point to the oh, it's a minus sorry, it's a minus sixteen. It's minus 32, sorry, I computed the, the first, the previous example. 
is minus 32, it's minus 16. Uh, and then we adjust the stack pointer. Okay. And then jump and link return to return address like here. So which instruction will be executed after this function? What is x1? So the definition of the, this, this instruction means that we just read value from x1 and pc is updated by x1 with the data of the, in the x1. Which instruction will be executed? This instruction. Because x1 has the PC of add i. I already explained. So this instruction will be executed. So what, what does this instruction do? Just load the list of data from step here. So we just restore the, this data, we just restore the uh, X1. So that is the add i here. Uh, no. The stack point is uh, already updated here. So it's uh, actually X10 and X1 here, right? So just, I just confused. So stack point is already updated here. So this is the current stack point. So we just update the, restore the, so like here. And then the stack point is restored to the original stack point. And then the multiply x10, x1, and then return to the, our return address of color, okay? So that means that in the, in the X1 here, so, so here we return to the, uh, this point, and then we just restore the X10 from the, this stack memory uh, here, and then X1 from here. So it's the original return address of color, okay? and then restore the stack point to the original point because we need to return to the color, original color, okay? So, and then multiply and multiply factorial n minus one. And if JALR is executed, then return to the color, the very next instruction of the, this parent function. So understand? So, and this recursive function, as the x1 can be overwritten by the another function call, the, the main technique is to store the content of x1, the data in x1 to the stack memory. And then the, <clears throat> the, the, the function is a little, the, actually the program is returned from the another function, then this return point is also restored from stack. So that's how the non-leaf function call is implemented. So just understand. So actually this is the recursive function. So it may be, a, a, it's more tricky. So this is a little bit tricky. The so function call is a little bit tricky, but the recursive function can be uh, more tricky. So try, so in this example, so try to draw a stack memory by the various number n. Then I believe you can understand 
how the, this recursive function works using step memory and jump and link register and the jump and link instruction. Okay. Uh, the factorial function, but it's it's a factorial function. So someone had some student has that does f. So try to understand that actually it's not f. The f is not one actually, but uh, if n is less than one, this is so just the return f. Okay. So actually the the last function call may, maybe it's the return other return values to be one. Okay. So, so it's not one actually. Okay. So try to understand the this function. So uh, I will explain after <laughs> the class. So try to understand the this function first. And then based on the dysfunction, try to understand the, the translated assembly instructions. Okay. Okay, it's so a memory layer layout. So we learned about the stack memory actually. And then also uh, we learned that the instructions are instructions are data. <clears throat> so when the our program is compiled, then this is our uh, normal program like like foo dot c. So actually, this is the it's a text file as you can see. The source file is composed of many texts, many letters. Man, that means the many characters. It's just text file like normal text file, and then this text file is compiled in the binary file. When the binary file is executed in the processor, then we, we need to assign some data in the name memory. Okay. So also as we learned in the previous slide, we need to use the temporary storage. That means stack. Also when the program is executed, some data is dynamically allocated inside of the memory. So for example, if we use a uh, malloc function in C or a new function in Java, then this data is dynamically allocated in the memory, assigned in the memory. So sometimes we can use the static data. So this data space is originally reserved inside of the memory, but based on the some dynamic allocation, then this dynamic data can be also allocated inside of the memory. So this is the typical uh, layout of the our main memory. So some part is reserved, some part is will be used by very privileged uh, applications such as operating system or kernels. So some parts are reserved, and then some part is used for text data. That means the actually instructions. So instructions are text data. So some instructions are executed here and then static data. So we can use the static data like A equal one, B equal two. So compiler also uh, calculate the, uh, uh, figure, uh, figured out this data, so it's a static data, and then assign the uh, memory space for these static data. And then other part of the memory is used for stack and dynamic data. So actually the dynamic data increases from the top of the stack data, uh, static data, and then it increases with this interaction. And then stack memory starts from the, the end of the memory layout. And then stack decreases like this. So that's why we use the stack point like SP, SP, stack, uh, calculate the stack point like add I, SP, sp minus 24, just negative value. So it is because the stack is adjusted to the lower direction from the top of the memory. 
but dynamic data increase from the top of the static data and then increase to the positive direction. Okay, that's how the memory is uh, allocate to the some instructions, text data, and static data, and the stack and dynamic data. Okay. So, uh, so actually this part is a little bit tricky. So try to understand the, this function call, especially because, so I usually uh, make uh, uh, exam questions from this part because it's a little bit tricky. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, and then any questions? Okay. Okay, uh, thank you and see you in the next one. Mon uh, Monday is also soft holiday. So I will also uh, record the video and post the recorded video on the YouTube. And then see you in the next Wednesday. Bye. Uh, 지금 그한 학생이 f 값이 1이라고 간주하는 거냐고 물어봤는데 1이라고 간주하지 않죠. f의 값을 C 코드에서 C 코드에서는 여기 정의가 된 대로 이제 실행이 되는 거고 어, f라는 거는 사실은 여기서 n이 0보다 자, 1보다 작을 때만 그 어? f가 뭐지? 아, 이게 좀 잘못 다 나와 있긴 하네. 아, 오케이, 아이씨. <웃음> 네, 이게 F가 아니라 사실 N이 돼야 될것 같은데. 음. 네, 이거는 좀 살펴봐야겠네요. 아, 이 오류가 있었구나. 1이, 1이 리턴이 돼야 되네요. 1이 리턴이 돼야 된다라고 이게 여기서는 돼야 될것 같습니다. 이거는 다음 시간에 다시 또 설명을 해야겠네요. F, 여기가 약간 좀 이상하게 돼 있는데, 어, 어디지? 네, 여기. 네, 여기가 F 이퀄 1이라는 거를 나타내고 있는 거고요. 네. 이게 아니라 이쪽이 아니라 1이 돼야 된다. 이렇게 설명이 돼야 되겠네요. 네. 끝 캐치입니다. 네. 마이크 치 마이크 티 네. 질문하세요. 아, 아 어, 교수님. 안녕하세요. 예, 예. 어, 잘 들리시나요? 네, 잘 들립니다. 네, 아, 그 질문은 그 방금 말씀해 주신 그거를 질문 드리려고 해서 네, 그, 그, 아. 잘, 잘 캐치했네요. 네, 네 이게 아. F가 아니라 1이 돼야 되겠네요. 1. 네. 네, 맞습니다. 아. 어, 그리고 다른 질문 하나 더. 네, 네. 그, 이거는 약간 그 과제, 과제와 관련된 건데 과제 내용은 아니고요. 그, 네. 그 답안을 작성을 할때 그 보면은 그세 번째 뭐, performance of A is improved by 뭐 n f 이런 얘기가 있는데 네. 그, 이거를 말씀을 하신 이유가 그, 어떤 값들을 비교를 할때 모두 다 퍼포먼스로 비교를 하라는 의미에서 이걸 말씀해 하시는 건가요? 네, 보통 이제 학생들이 퍼포먼스를 비교하라고 할까 그러니까 퍼포먼스는 우리가 
아주 하나의 뭐 매트릭으로 나타내는 게 아니라 사실은 다른 베이스 라인하고 비교를 하긴 해야 돼요. 그래서 퍼포먼스를 항상 물어볼 때는 어떤 게뭐 얼만큼 더 좋냐 뭐 이런 식으로 이제 컴페어를 해가지고 이제 물어보게 되는 거고 이제 그때 이제 퍼포먼스가 뭐 A랑 B를 비교해서 몇 퍼센트 더 좋다 할때 A랑 B를 이제 그 나누기를 해가지고 디바이드를 해가지고 이런 값이 나오면은 NN 퍼센트 더 좋다고 얘기한다라고 이제 써준 거예요. 그러니까 학생들이 아... 이게 쓸때 답을 답안지를 쓸때 여러 가지 이렇게 뭔가 그러니까 A랑 B의 퍼포먼스를 비교하세요라고 하면은 또 여러 가지 시도를 하더라고요. 뭐 예를 들어 뭐 네. 나누기를 해서 그러니까는 베이스라인이 밑에 있고 A가 B에 비해서 몇 퍼센트 좋아졌느냐 이렇게 하면은 베이스라인을 밑에다 넣어놓고 뭐 이런 식으로 해야 되는데 근데 퍼포먼스가 반대니까 우리가 반대로 해야죠. 그렇죠? 네. 네. 퍼포먼스는 반대니까. 근데 이제 여러 가지 그런 시도를 해가지고 그냥 문, 그 처음에 딱 이렇게 써준 거죠. A, R, B의 퍼포먼스를 비교할 때는 몇 퍼센트 좋아졌다 이렇게 나타날 때는 그걸 나누기 해가지고 이렇게 써야 된다. 뭐 이런 식으로. 아, 네. 아, 그러면은 혹시 그 퍼포먼스가 아닌 다른 것들, 예를 들어서 뭐 사이클 타임이라던가 이런 것들을 비교를 할 때는 굳이 이렇게 레이시오를 가지고 비교를 할 필요는 없는 명시를 할 필요는 없는 건가요? 네, 예, 그렇죠. 뭐 사이클 타임이라고 할 때는 그냥 사이클 타임 자체를 물어보는 거기 때문에 몇 사이클이냐 뭐 그런 거니까 는 거기에 대해서는 비교할 필요는 없는 거죠. 뭐 예를 들어 몇 초가 걸리냐 이런 게 물어봤을 때는 비교할 필요는 없는 거잖아요. A를 실행할 때몇초 걸리냐 B를 실행할 때몇초 걸리냐 이런 거할 때는 뭐 그거는 비교할 필요가 없으니까 그 완전히 딱 떨어지는 값이니까 그거는 아, 아 그렇죠 그러니까 아 그럴 때는 그냥 퍼포... 값만 네. 기대를 아. 네 그렇죠 네아 어, 이해했습니다 네, 감사합니다 네.